raise your child in worship. My son, both of my sons, but I remember one day, it was about what, how many years? About 12 years ago? About 12 years ago, I said, um, we gonna play. We didn't know a lick, a note, didn't know how to play nothing. I said, I'm going to the pawn shop and I'm gonna buy a keyboard, some drums, and a bass for my for my younger son. And that was on a, it was on, I think that was on a Monday. We knew three chords, maybe two, and we were playing on Wednesday. And and uh, my young, my oldest son here, he he just came out with music in his in his life. So he's a uh, very multi-talented, and uh, but he grew up under a worship sound. That's why when he plays, you'll notice it's a difference when he plays because he don't know nothing else but that sound. He don't. He didn't play any club music, rap music, none of that. He only knows this sound. All of them, even our drummer, he only knows. They, they grew up under it. When you raise them up under it, it stays in them. It remains in them. And so when I want to set an atmosphere, all I have to do is begin to tell him to play, and he'll set an atmosphere. And because he's He's, he's grew up under the sound. It always brings the anointing on me when they, when they play, man. So if you can help it, all you pastors that have, men, it's always going to be men, young men that play your music. I don't know why. It's just something that we do. Fight for them to stay holy. Stay out of the club. Don't let Satan prostitute their gifts. Because... One of the reasons why we're not sensing the presence of God is because of the tainted vessels that, that, that play for Baal Saturday and then try to use those same chords in the assembly of worship and the Lord will not anoint it, amen. And so, I thank the Lord. I, that's one of the things the church is really missing. We're missing our, our musicians, amen. We have a lot of people, but not everybody really, really can enter into worship. So I really I appreciate Bishop. I went to Bishop's church. He had four or five guys that could play. I'm like, man, I ain't know you can get all them guys together to play. We had a lot of guys that can play. And... Um, that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that we're not leaving behind the importance of worship for trying to get to the word, trying to get people information. We fail to cause them to transcend first so they can get a fresh download from the most high. Then when we preach, all we're doing is confirming what they heard already. Good preaching is confirmation for people who get in the presence of God themselves. The word that make you jump up and start shouting is the one you already heard while you was in your time with the Lord and then somebody said it. The preacher said it as confirmation then that's out of the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. That's the word that causes us to worship. Say amen. Amen. If you keep going, I'm going to go into that. I, I, my message is not that, amen. I have another message. I'll, I'll be in, brother. Amen. I'm not going to have any worship, but just keep playing, son, amen. Uh, get in your Bibles. Go to Genesis chapter 1. I want to leave you with this message. I mean, we've had a wonderful conference, amen, so far. Amen. I'm so appreciative of... Do we have any partners here tonight? Any partners in here? Any partners? Stand up, partner. Let me see who y'all stand. Stand. Amen. Look at that. Amen. Partners. Praise the Lord. Thank y'all. These are the people that that truly, truly support uh, Destin Ministries. Amen. They support truly. But I'm not saying some of y'all who engage don't support. But it's something when you commit that say, I'm going to do a certain thing all the time. Amen. And uh, I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Every city we go to, believe it or not, this Negro Land Tour wasn't our first conference. We did, it's like our 10th, I don't know how many conferences we done done, but uh, every city we go to, we have about this, we really have more than this, but uh, 
I heard a lot of people was calling saying, man, I got some 4th of July stuff going on so they couldn't make it. But And then some of them say, Florida too far. <laughs> you know our people, man, they, Florida too far. I ain't driving that far. So, uh, but we thank the Lord for those that are here. Amen. Amen. Yeah, just keep flowing like that, son. I'm not gonna, I can go with that. Um, this message, uh, we, we thank God for Pastor Tebow's message. Amen. Bishops, amen message amen they message actually went went together amen my message is, is is gonna flow on that thing but it's a little different because um yesterday last night we talked about decreeing and declaring um uh pastor pastor tebow uh he gave a foundation once again of who we are amen uh and then bishop amen cry repentance say amen uh, as, as, as great as these messages are, they don't, these, these messages won't work. We can't implement them. Now you got to stop because if you keep going, I'm going I'm to stay in a, in a worship vein. I'm, I want to preach. I want to preach this. Thank you, son. Get my son here. Amen. Appreciate him. Amen. Amen. Um, the, 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 this message I have is different because, um, no matter what we preach in our churches or I don't want to say synagogues, but temples or whatever you do when you c congregate. No matter how good the word is, if we don't get this aspect right, you can't build anything, no nation, nothing, no church, no people, because it starts with a nucleus of the family. Talk to me. It starts with the nucleus. And so my message is a little unorthodox because I'm going to talk about something you may have never heard. And it's called healing the Hebrew. Healing the Hebrew. We need our women. We are the only people that our women are not our women. Y'all don't want to talk back, but you're going to. We need our women. We've been without our women for a long time. They've targeted our women to fight for other causes. Our help meet, our helping others. Y'all gonna get what I'm saying. I said we need our women. No nation can be built without our women. And I believe the Most High has put us in a position where our women need us to fight for them again. Because they thought that this governmental system would fight for them and it's turning on our women. That's making our women need us again to fight for them. So we're going to have a trade-off. The reason why we need our women is because most men won't say this, but they are very, very broken very, very wounded because to be a black man, no other woman can understand us because no other woman birthed us. No other woman raised us. No other woman seen our struggle. No other woman knows our pain. No other woman has heard us cry. No other woman understands because she's not us. Only our women. Talk to me. So I thank God for who we are. I thank God for decreeing and declaring. But if we don't get this straight, we can't build anything. Say amen. amen. And so I begin to think about this message. Amen. Like I get all most of my messages, I'll just sit there and think a while. Close that door. I'll sit there and think a while about a message and then it'll, it'll just, the Lord will drop it in my heart. And I'm so glad that he did. Um, most brothers in here, most men have never, ever, ever been able to be honest. Most men have never been honest. Whenever, whenever they attempt to be honest, they're going to be judged for their honesty. If a woman say, what you thinking? And he be honest. You really want to know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about cutting my hair off, changing my name, driving 50 miles away from you. Oh, I ain't know that's what you, you you're not going to understand. Do you really want honesty? Most men have never been honest because honesty is something hard to handle 
from a black man because we've been told how we should feel. We've been told how we should think. We've been told if we was a real man. And so most of us are broken because we have never been healed from the wounds of our own father. Talk to me. Close the door. Close the door. Amen. Where was I at? Close the door. <laughs> Come on, say being honest. We've, I've tried to gather brothers together. One of the hardest things there is to do in any church is to gather men together, not for working or not for doing something, but just to come together to, to, to be men, to come together to fellowship. You have men's fellowship, and, by the, and, and, and 30 minutes in, he's looking at his watch. His wife's calling. Brothers do not build real relationship. And that's the very thing that we need. Say amen. amen. So, so this is going to be a, a heavy message. I feel it already. That's what that worship part was about. It's going to be a heavy message because I want you to know I'm so tired of, of saying this is the problem and this is the problem and this is the problem. None of that really is the problem. We would have been done came into who we was. But there was a diabolical plan to split the foundation of any nation they split it, and that's the reason why our, we walk around with tattoos on our neck. Changing our names because we don't know our real name, so we change our names to Killer and TT and Doo Doo. <laughs> Say amen. amen. We got a bunch of men that are not men. We got effeminate boys that are so emasculated because they grew up without men that they no longer want to be men. Say man. And because many of us can't go back to where we lost masculinity from not having a male, a father, somebody to build us up. The only thing we had was our women. And what I found being a man who grew up without a father is that first, Christ gave me my true identity when I was around 25. But after I got my identity from Christ, I was still wounded. Because no matter how great the spirit is, and spiritual things and heavenly things, God expresses his love through an earthly vessel. This is the reason why some of y'all are so warped because you think it's all only God. But as loving as he is, he needs a vessel to express, to give you the full expression of his love. And if you have never, if you have never had that, you are lopsided in your thinking. So this message came out of some memories that I begin to have. And when I begin to talk and counsel brothers, they all have this same emptiness. Very successful, but empty. Look like they got a good family, but empty. I say, brother, what's wrong with you? I said, I've never been truly honest with anybody. I said, brother, if you've never been honest, then you're really alone. The Bible says it's not good that man should be alone. Men are married, but they're alone. You think he's listening, he's not, he's alone. He's watching TV, not really watching TV, he's just by himself. What do you think a man cave is? He didn't know he's alone. And it's not good that man should be alone because when we are alone, that's when the tempter comes to give us a solution to end our pain. Self-medication always comes from being alone. The Bible says, I will, I, I will make something suitable for him. Say suitable. That means well adapted. She is the thing. Y'all didn't catch that. 
No, ain't no other thing. She's the thing that is well adapted to keep me from being alone. Are y'all there? And so no matter how much we preach Hebrew this, Hebrew that, gospel this, gospel that, if I find out who God says I am and don't got a woman, that will release honor unto me. All men suffer from a lack of honor. And it's very hurtful to see our women honor everything and everybody and not honor us. Talk to me. I said we need our women. The lie of feminism has destroyed us as a people. We fought for feminism when we had nothing to fight about. Feminism was a deceptive, demonic, white people stuff that had nothing to do with us. The white woman looked over at the black woman and seen she was always honored. Big mama never had a problem. Everybody honored her. The white woman wasn't on about her man and she was at war with her man because he not only oppressed us, he oppressed her. So she recruited the white, the black woman by giving us something to fight for. Even though she wasn't oppressed. Y'all don't, you, we lost our women. And we can't have no Hebrew nation. We can't be no Judah unless we get this foundation. Talk to me. So as y'all can hear by my premise, this is heavy. Genesis 1. So if we really want to understand, you know, we are the most dysfunctional people when it comes to relationship. If you go on YouTube, we have thousands of black men and black women fighting each other. Putting out videos against each other, fighting each other. And we are so dysfunctional because we have, we, we have the American way, but not the Hebraic model for successful relationship. Talk to me. I said there's a Hebraic way, meaning what did the Most High intend? People quote the Bible but never get the intent. The Bible says you must hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You can quote the word, but if the spirit doesn't speak, then you won't get the intent. This is how cults start. Teaching this book without spirit. Oh, that's good within itself. So the intent of the spirit for relationship was manifested in the first model. So when I want to find out about anything, I go back always to the beginning because how was it in the beginning? Talk to me. Because if we're going to have God's success, we must have the God model. I said the God model. Come on, say the God model. Look at this, Genesis 1 and 20. Are you there? And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. Come on, say meet. Come on, say suitable. Say suitable. This means that the original model for relationships was based on suitability. What could meet the need? Talk to me. The reason why it was very important to find something suitable because if God didn't create something to meet the need, then he would have, him being by himself, would have looked wrong at an animal. The woman was created to keep the man from getting in trouble. There was nothing suitable. It had to mean he was looking for something. And you brothers get in trouble every time you go looking for something. The Bible says when kings go to war, David's on the roof looking for something. He saw Bathsheba. 
when kings go to war, when he should have been about his business, he's on the roof. It's not good that man should be alone. Say, man, I know men that go to church and smile at you and dress good and, 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 and are in a deep depression. They do what's required of them, what's expected, what everybody believed they should do. And secretly they said, when am I going to get some level of joy? I work because I got to. I'm married because I'm supposed to be. I got kids because that's what I was told. I got a home and taken care of it because that's what's expected. We got many men of God right in a midlife crisis. You know what a midlife crisis really is? It's the point of realization that your life ain't what you thought it would be. But because you're faithful, you don't quit. You ride it out with secret frustration. Because I wonder if I was to be honest with the woman that I've laid with for 20 years and gave beautiful babies to, I wonder if I was to roll over me honest and say, you know what? I'm not happy. Could she handle it? The answer is no. <laughs> you want me to tell you why it's no? Because you don't know he think it. You don't know he think that way. That's why the answer is no, because he ain't told you, because you can't handle it. But you were created to be suitable. That means if anybody should be able to handle my terms of life, it should be what was created to be suitable. How are we married to help meets with no help? I said it. So yes, we as men have to become men of valor, men of honor, get on the front line, fight for our family, but we need our women to get their mind changed Amen. from this system that told them to be independent. Amen. From this anything you can do, I can do better. Talk to me. You know why a lot of brothers are silent now? You couldn't handle him to say amen on what I'm saying. If he said, that's why, the so sitting there, this nigga saved, he better not say amen. 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 Because part of our frustration is keeping up appearances. How y'all don't want this? See? <laughs> this is the reason why all of you cats in this Hebrew stuff preaching Sabbath every day, you losing in this area because there's more than Negro land. After I found out who I am, I still got problems. They didn't go nowhere. And somebody has to help me, talk to me. The reason why somebody like me came out of nowhere, you know, everybody talk to me, say, I don't know how I even got to your YouTube. I don't know how I saw your video. It just popped up, I don't know where you came from. That's what everybody say. But they say, I started to listen, and all of a sudden I was gonna turn it off, I didn't really mean to listen, but I listened, and all of a sudden I got stuck. <laughs> Who is this? Strumming my pain with his fingers. <laughs> Bring me my rag. I'm very anointed right now. I'm anointed. And people say all the time, who, who is this? Are y'all there? 
This is the problem with information without relationship. This is the damage of the internet. Information without relationship. You can give me knowledge, but sometimes I don't, knowledge is not what I need. Talk to me. What you really need is impartation. Impartation skips years of pain that you have to get dealing with information. Y'all, yeah. did you hear what I said? If I tell you what you got to do, then you got to have years to work out the truth I told you. But impartation skips you over that. Because impartation is about acceleration. Meaning, impartation restores unto you the years you lost trying to work it out. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't. So to have a flesh person in your life that speaks wisdom gives you impartation. And this is why many people, they talk to me and they say, man, I haven't heard a word like that in 20 years, and I'm doing things like that. You, the, the, the importation has been accelerated. Acceleration is always based upon where you should be. I don't want to go into that. Say amen. amen. Where you should be before you started leading you. Are y'all there? Come on, talk to me. Come on, say suitable. Is this not the beginning? Before sin. Come on, this is the model before sin. So don't say God is, is, is chauvinist or this is some man. Talk, this is before they knew Satan. This was God's model. Talk back to me. He made our women in a way that we would always desire her. Say amen. She is suitable to me. My wife is suitable to me. It wasn't based upon the device all women got. If you think it's only about that, you missing. You have a sad marriage. Because, honey, your marriage is based on what a million other women got. They all got that. Cut the lights off. It's all the same. But my wife fits. The, I, I'll show you. The Bible says, and the, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone, my rib. What God has for me only fits me. The problem with fornication is you have been forcing yourself to fit in places you don't. Like a puzzle piece that you get frustrated with so you start trying to beat it in her. That's why you are abused. Because you ain't found out who your real be is. And whose rib you are. Every man is not, you not as real. Every woman is not your real brother. She got to fit. But why are we getting people that don't fit? Because we're not honest. Because if I was honest with you, I would tell you what my weaknesses is. And God only sent you to me because something was missing. He didn't send Adam a, a woman because Adam had it together. He sent him a woman because something's missing. But you will never know if you fit, if I never be honest, to tell you what's missing. So when I meet you, I put my shoes, my car, I put my Superman on, and you never know my weakness. If you never know my weakness, you will never know what you fit because you, my weakness fits your strength. Yeah. 
So some of you brothers have married your weakness. Because neither one of y'all was honest. Meaning, two are better than one because when one falls, the other one, that's only because that, one, that person is strong where you're weak. So, what if I marry a person that's weak where I'm weak? Then when we down, we both down because we both weak in the same place. Talk to me. But, but the only reason, oh, oh, go further, go further, Pastor. Yes, I'm going further. There's something that men begin to need. You don't need it at 20. You don't need it at 25, even 30. Maybe even 35, you don't need it. Around the late 30s, early 40s, when you begin to realize that you're not invincible and your knee hurt and your back hurt and you understand now you ain't got it like you used to. You, have, you, you begin to develop a need that you didn't know you had in your 20s. You didn't know you had it in your 30s. or your, But right around that late 30s or 40s, you start noticing something is missing. This is when your midlife crisis come. This is when you got to have a woman that's suitable, brother. You got to have a woman that didn't get, that didn't let the feminist movement get her caught up in herself. Because the feminist movement is about you worshiping you. Everybody is sacrificed for the joy of the woman. That's why the kids are dysfunctional. And the man is gone. But she's beautiful. Y'all want me to tell y'all what this need is, don't y'all? <laughs> There's a need. You begin to develop. It's, it's, it's sort of like it's sort of like having. It's sort of like wanting something, and just can't put your finger on it. Your reason why you can't put your finger on because you never had it. You never had it because you was never honest with anybody enough for them to be it. So, around late thirties, early forties. You start having a lot of problems in your relationship a lot of times. If you don't get this, it, you'll have a lot of problems. Because you will be angry at your woman because she's not giving you what you need, but you don't know what you need. A lot of you sisters, a lot of times these brothers are mad at y'all. They mad because they, they want you to be something, but they're not sure what you're supposed to be. In their 20s, they were trying to make you mama. Y'all, look, look, I teach about the Holy Ghost. It ain't all about Hebrew. We can't be Hebrew hurting and wounded. We got to get healed. Talk to me. So what begins to happen is you begin to reach, reach. And what What's wrong with most men is they have never listened to me. They have never listened to me because they, they flipped it on us, Elder. They flipped it on us and told us that women need to exhale. And that was a lie. It's men, especially the black man, that was told you was born a black boy. Suck it up. You ain't getting the correct education, but suck it up. You don't know, your daddy left you, suck it up. Don't be a criminal, but you was put around criminals, suck that up. You had a baby because you was too young to know what you were doing, suck it up. You go to town, well, I, suck it up. You're sucking it up and then they still say, be a man. And most of your breakdown comes when you have sucked it up so far. That you can't handle anything else or nobody else telling you to suck it up. 
And what begins to happen is what I call a blowout. A blowout is when you sucked it up so far and you're trying to hold it, but because you don't want to let them down. Don't want to let them down. Don't want to let them down. And, this, and it blows out in a scandal of an adulterous affair. It blows out in prescription pills. It blows out in drinking. Because of sucking it up. was so painful and frustrating that instead of being able to go to my, my help meet, I find something else. Some temporary thing to numb the pain. This is when affairs start. This is when people get to the middle of their life and you say, they were together 20 years. What happened? Why did they leave each other? You know, we always say that he was a good brother. <laughs> Nobody knew. He... <laughs> and if he, and listen, and if his woman heard, you know, trying to release, what's, what's wrong with you? Because she's never learned how to be his help. Because she thinks that his help is only to lift her. She didn't know that she is the relief valve. Y'all gonna hear me. And so no matter how much teaching we get, our women have to be trained. What do they need to be trained with? You want me to fight for you, don't you? You want me to cover you? You want me to jump in front of the arrow? I can do all that. I got you. But when I come home from fighting and I take off my armor and blood is running, I need you now to minister to me so that I know why you pulling the arrow out of my back. It's worth it. How can I come off the battlefield fighting for you and my family to hold it all together? I got whores at work want me. Coming to work with low cuts and tight stuff, and I'm trying my best not to. I'm fighting her. I'm fighting the white man. I got to drive, hoping I don't get pulled over. I got an X on my back. I got a target on my chest. There's a price on my head, and I can't come home and fight you. This is the one place that I should be able to get a release. Because a woman, the help me meant release. Act like y'all don't know what that mean. Just act like you don't understand. She was created for release. Oh, you don't understand? You know when a man get a release? Do you know what that, who said that? Do you know what that mean? You've had enough men release on you, you should know what it mean. That was what the suitable was, so he didn't mess with an animal. Now we've only equivalent, we've only thought men were talking about sex. So that's all y'all focusing on. It's not just sex. Who, see they lied and said sex is a man's number one need. That's a lie. My number one need is to hear God. It's my number one need. Y'all don't know that unless you lived a few years without having sex, then you know what your need is because it took God. <laughs> Talk to me. See, even while I'm preaching this, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something, Bishop. Even while I'm preaching this, there's a serpent of feminism. Some of these sisters in here mad. When you're going to get on the man, what is he supposed to do? Facebook gives you enough of what men's supposed to do. 
You ain't never seen a Facebook post of what a woman's supposed to do for a man if he was a real man, girl. All, this, all these memes about what men's supposed to do. What about what you're supposed to do? That's that current of feminism, bruh. If I really want to break it down, you know that's that Jezebel thing in there. It swarms around because they waiting for you to attack the men while he's already bleeding. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Leave. I ain't going to do it. Because you talking about stand up and be a man. We can't stand up. Unless we have the Hebraic model of our help meet. That's why I think it's a joke when they start these movements of Black Lives Matter and stuff. It's a joke. You know why it's a joke? They ain't for children or men. It's a joke. Read the website. They for queers and transgenders and foolishness. Stuff that ain't gonna build no nation. See, anything don't build no nation, I, don't, I ain't for what I ain't watching. I ain't, you would never get me involved. But see, when we talk about this stuff, when we talk about this, what I'm talking about now, it's a snake slithering through, angry, because some man broke your heart, and instead of you getting healed, you spent your life proving that he's wrong. Let me help you, honey. He ain't never going to say he did it. You would never get your day in court. Because you know how I know? Because when y'all call our ministry, that's what y'all want to talk about. Well, he did Shut up. Shut up. This is why I teach y'all, get, you better learn about grace. Because it's Hebrew stuff, don't have a cross. You get healed by going to the cross. See, if you want a nation, now, 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 now you brothers know I'm telling the truth. It's the last night y'all do know I'm ready to go home. I'm going to say everything I want to say. You can be mad on this one. I'm out. I'm going back to Kentucky. Now, 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 now you brothers have heard your whole life. Why don't the men stand up? The men need to just be men. They just be men. You've heard that. And many of us good brothers say, well, I am a man. I'm, I'm taking care of my family. I'm being a man. I'm marrying my wife. I love what I'm doing. And then you still hear, why don't the men? And then you say, I'm, I'm here. The reason why they do that is because we've been raised by broken, wounded, bitter mothers. And they've taught that brokenness and distrust to their daughters and their sons. And that's why we have a look at our young men, how they operate, how they talk. They talk like they mama. Yeah. Yeah. I seen brothers yeah. just talking like they mama. You ever seen how, I'm gonna show you, if you go on YouTube and, you, and these girls is getting ready to fight, right? How do women fight? They'll look at each other for a minute and then they charge each other to string it. Like, 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 they ain't using no logic or no control. Look at the boys. It's the same female in them that makes them just not think but just charge each other. Women can get away with that, y'all. Notice they never get killed. They never kill each other when they fight. They pull each other, weave out, her out, and all that. They don't never kill each other. But what happens to men? Because they are, see, a man operating out of feminine procedure, even though he murdered the man, he did it because he was operating out of feminine procedure, which means men were not taught to react in emotion. We were taught to think. We are logical. You can't have a covering that don't think. That's why God created the man and he said, I'm going to put you over the woman because you're logical. Women can be illogical because they have a covering. The covering is the man that can help filter her emotions with her. You ain't never been covered. That's why you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you ever had a real covering and you was over hysterical and you be mad because the man would come and say, girl, what? Well, ain't nothing wrong. We be all right. It's going to get all done. And you'll be mad at him like, why? Don't he see? Because your, your real, you know your real problem. You want him to be as emotional as you. You don't think he care unless he's like you. He wasn't taught to do that. So, you, so he'll go over and sit down and you'll be fuming 
You don't know just because he ain't talking don't mean he ain't thinking. He just knows I ain't got no solution, so let me go sit down. He'll come. You told him that on Monday. He'll come back to you on Thursday and say, I think it's what we ought to do. <laughs> and you'll be like, what, what? Where you been at? You know, I've been over here doing what I'm supposed to do, keeping us logical before we make an emotional decision. If you, that's what you missing in a good man. The man's, listen, y'all, I'm, 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 I'm oh, get the, get the, get the doors open. The man was created to, to bring limits. Men create boundary, meaning this is how far you go. Without boundary, the kids don't know how far to go. Let's go one deeper. The woman don't know how far to go. You don't believe me? When a woman's uncovered, she walk out of the house with a slip and ski boots on. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> wasn't no masculine in there saying, look. When a woman's uncovered, she befriends witches. How many of you sisters got a man that said, I don't want you around, huh? Amen. He was thinking. Amen. Well, what you see about her? She's, she's my friend. I don't want you around, huh? Amen. I ain't got to tell you what I see. I'm telling you, you don't need to be around her. It's a covering. See, see, when the Bible says, Adam, rule over your woman, it didn't mean, it wasn't talking about put her under your feet. That wasn't what it's saying. It meant that Paul says she's the weaker vessel, meaning she's more fragile than you. Anything fragile needs covering. I don't have time, I gotta go. Because Satan, listen, Satan's got a thing with your woman. The prophecy went out that the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent will be in a battle. The seed of the woman, meaning it's not the woman's seed. The seed is of the man. She's the carrier of it. He can't get the man because when the, when the seed is in the man is not yet formed, so he waits till it gets into the woman. Why? Because he already knew how to talk to the woman. That's why he never talked to Adam. He was there before Eve. Satan, Satan was in the garden. He was there. He didn't talk to Adam. Why? Because men are not built to listen. If I, if, I have a count, if I have a counseling session with you right now, every woman, if I sit you down here and I say, what's wrong with your man? He don't listen. <laughs> and you think something wrong with him. What you don't know, he wasn't built to listen. He was built to lead. Amen. That's why Adam, that's why the servant didn't talk to Adam. Because he wasn't listening. But he saw this other creature. A little more frail, a little bit smaller. Her machine, which is called this body, was built with a little bit more devices and organs. And, and this creature is a little more animated and talks all the time. She actually tells me her business. <laughs> I know what she think because she going to tell me. <laughs> Y'all don't believe me. These sisters know. If you ain't around, man, she be in there talking to herself. Man, I, I don't know what they think I'm talking, who they think I am. They, they come in here again. I t ain't nobody in the house. The Satan is in there. Let's go and tell me what he did to you. Because he know how to get to him. Do you hear what I'm saying? You going to hear me. He knew how to get to the woman. Because she's built different. That's why Paul says she's a weaker vessel. Adam was, Adam sinned. Eve was bewitched or tricked. Adam disobeyed. He knew what he was doing. Eve was beguiled. Why you think she need a covering? Because the enemy understand the woman. Open the doors, Elder. They ready? <laughs> then my, Elder survived on message like this. The snake starts moving. 
because this is the uh, this is the spirit of of the queen of the coast that rules this nation that has gotten in TV communication and books and movies and taught our women because they've been uncovered so long but they're going to absorb information the same way the serpent walked up. Yeah, he didn't slither. He walked up and started talking to our women. And notice that she listened. This, this, this is why after they sinned, what did the Most High say? He said, now, Adam, you need to rule over your woman. This is the Hebraic model, bro. You know why we can't have no revival and no big churches building good homes and good family? Because they don't want the Hebraic model. There's things, things have to be sacrificed to get it, have it God's way. Amen. And some of y'all been too independent too long. Well, let's talk about Negro land. Let's get, no, sir. No, sir. We've been out of order for 70 years now. And this is why we keep getting capitalized upon and they know ain't nothing going to change in the black community until we get this back right. Talk to me. Look at this. Now I'm going to show you. Y'all ready? Come on, talk to me. And Adam said, verse 23, now this is born of my bone flesh and my flesh. Listen, 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 listen. She shall be called. Did the most high, who so said that? She shall be called woman. He called her woman. He named his own woman. Now, brothers, you get married and they want to hyphenate your name. They don't want your name no more. You know why they hyphen? The hyphen is, you know what hyphen means? Just in case. I ain't going to have to go too far to go back to me. I just cut you off. That's why they don't take your name, brother. Don't let them lie to you. It's professional. Don't nobody know her. <laughs> don't nobody know her enough so she keep her name. It's because she it's easy to go back when it don't work. And because a hyphen is there and you didn't give your all, that's your door. That, 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 that little doubt you got is what's going to actually lead to the destruction of your marriage. <laughs> when you get into a marriage, there is no way out. Burn all bridges. Get your she money, put it in the pot, so there's no backsliding kit. And when you put it all in, you think twice about leaving because you think about, I'm, I need this guy, I got to work it out, I ain't got nothing left. Ain't no way out. You got to go into marriage with it all. This is why the greatest marriage is work of people to get married they ain't got nothing. Them marriages work because they ain't had nothing. They build stuff together. You get people that got stuff, they can't stay married two years. You know why? They got too much. They ain't built nothing together. She got her own, he got his own. As soon as you don't make me feel good, I buy. We ain't built nothing. That old lying stuff they said, told you so in the 90s, girl, write it down what you want and tell him to put the list down and he got to have this and he got to have that and you got this and you got, what if y'all got it all? What do you need? Yeah. Marriage is about meeting of needs. Yeah. If you got it all, talk to me. Yeah. Ain't this a good word? You know, the greatest thing that happens in our ministry is marriage. Yeah. The greatest anointing me and my wife got is for marriage. Yeah. Brothers have heard me in the call say, you know what? You said get married, I'm getting married. You know why? Because they, I explained it enough to tell them how right it is. Yeah. Marriage is the only way out for our people. Yeah. Yes, the only way. <laughs> it's the only way. Yeah. Now let me help you. What's the... We've tried every other way. We've been comedic, we've been Islam, we've been single, we've been divorced, we've been in adultery, we've been faggots, we've been in all, and ain't none of that built no kingdom. The only thing that has ever worked was biblical Hebraic marriage.
guess what I hit? That's what it is. That's what it is. I done been all over the world. When I go to Africa, you know why? They poor as a joke, but they got more love, joy, and happiness because everybody knows the purpose. Amen. They cherish they men there. Amen. I've been there. They cherish them brothers. You nigga rode right around with dashikis like, y'all ain't been past 15th Street. <laughs> Talking about Egypt. Why well, you comedic cats won't be Egyptians? You do know there's other countries there. You know there's some cats in Africa that put their head in the cow's butt. We ain't them people though. We all Egypt. How can the original model bishop be wrong? How can the original system, how can the original model be wrong? If this was wrong, God would have come up with another plan. What no other plan? Even after they sinned, he didn't come up with a new plan. He said, this thing that I said going to happen, it's got to work this way now. I ain't going to do away with it, just like Adam couldn't do away with the woman he blamed for sinning. It ain't that you ain't reached your destiny, brother, because of your woman. You want to be ministers and pastors, it's hard. No, it ain't. It's you. You ain't never submitted to no man. Nowhere. And you think the Lord going to give you, the Bible says you got to be faithful over what's another man's before you get your own. Show me the man of God that you pushed his vision, that you served in his ministry. You want to be shot out and go to the moon with no um, fortification, with no character building. That's why your ministry won't work. Quit blaming that woman. Now, you sister should have said. Because when the brothers get frustrated, it's the woman you gave me. This is the beginning of this is the beginning of the complex of our women. Now, Adam did it. You need to understand women's number one fear is abandonment. Number one, it's abandonment. It's abandonment. It's the number one fear. The reason why she operating witchcraft, try to know everything, try to control you, because she don't know what you're going to do. That's what they want to know, what you're going to do. <laughs> You'll be sitting there watching TV, what you thinking about? Why you think? What you thinking about? <laughs> she need to know. Because <laughs> most, women are, most women live like this. <laughs> they bracing because this Negro going to come in here with something. And when he do, <laughs> I'm ready. Why? Because cause our forefather, Adam, when the Most High tried to bring him into accountability, he tried to separate, even though he ate the fruit, but he's separating with the juice running down his jaw. <laughs> it's the woman you gave me. That set up the complex in our women why they always feel like you're going to leave. You'll be just sitting there, you'll be eating, you say, I'm tired of this chicken. So what, you want somebody else's chicken? You ain't saying nothing about nobody. Everything, she gonna equate to that. You ain't saying nothing about nobody else. So what's the, my, when all my chicken used to be good, what, you talking about me? You ain't, you're like, I ain't talking about you. But every, cause that's her worst fear. Come on, I should be teaching you. Are y'all there? <laughs> <laughs> like you know you know how y'all argue quit lying you argue and you say man I'm getting tired of this so, so what, you, what you gonna do now, now think about this let me show you let me show y'all the modern woman y'all ready it's the modern women it's the modern woman well go on then I don't need you anyway he said alright alright I'm getting my stuff then, then, then when you get yourself put the bag no no. <laughs> They'll block the door. No. No. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. No, they be, they be talking that tough stuff. 
Because, listen to me, come on, talk to me. Listen to me. Because her worst fear is abandonment, she constantly tests you to see if you're going to abandon her. So she literally will push you to the limits to see how far, she'll push you to the limits and when you get to the limit and she know you for real, okay, <laughs> all right. I'm, see, I pushed him too hard. She just wanted to see what does it, what's it going to take for him to leave me. I don't need to know. <laughs> Give you the illustration. The female eagle, before she mates with a male eagle, she gets a stick about as big as a baby. She flies as high as she can. She drops it. The male got to catch it before it hit the ground. If he's successful, now you think that would be good enough. That's awesome. She's up there hundreds of feet, drop a stick, his brother, boom, catch it. That would be enough for me. This brother's tough. But she say, no, sir, it ain't good enough. She go get a stick big as herself. And she take it up and drop it. And if he catch that one, she mate with him for life. Why did she have to try him? The same way sisters try us. Because they really want to know in the back of their mind, how crazy is too crazy? <laughs> you brothers don't understand something. I've been teaching a long time. Oh, listen to me. Yeah, I, I'm, being, yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving you a secret. I'm giving you brother the greatest secret that you've ever heard in your life. All women are crazy. <laughs> they know they're crazy. They know, they be sitting there in the bed one, do he know I'm as crazy as I, do he know I think the way I do? They, they, you know what, you know why they so scared? Because they wondering if I let him know how crazy I am. And so what's happening over the years, brother, what's happening over the years, they, 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 <laughs> what they doing, Bishop? They letting a little crazy out at a time. <laughs> then when they get too crazy, oh, I was too much crazy. Come on, let me take something back. And they're a little, when you read it, they'll let a little more crazy out. Oh, he's okay with that crazy. Okay. Oh, he's okay. I'm really great. Because our women, listen, brothers, they'll love us to death. They'll love us. They'll, they'll, they will love us to the ends of the earth if they can believe that we won't leave. They'll love us to death. They'll love us through anything we've ever gone through. If we can, if they can believe that we won't leave. And for you brothers that are starting out, let me go ahead and bust your bubble quick. It's going to take you about seven to ten years. Yeah, seven to ten years. Cause she's not gonna show you her crazy. That's seven to ten years. This is the reason why a man gotta be committed. That's why I like what that young brother did. He 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 honored. It's important. It's important for brothers to do it that way, because you know what happened when he did that. The congregation can hold him accountable. Because he going to get like Mike. He going to... And we say, uh-uh, bro. Get back in there, bro. That's why you sisters want to be honored that way. Where a brother do it in front of everybody. So now the whole block know. Oh, that's so-and-so, man. You don't need you being mad. You paid your $25. You paid for this cutting. You might as well just open up and receive it. <laughs> Let me tell you one of my greatest. Y'all want to tell you one of my greatest anointing. <laughs> Y'all want to tell you my greatest anointing. People that know me know it. My greatest anointing. The time the power of God come on me the greatest is when the spirit of Jezebel is in the room. That's when anointing fall on me heavy. I have an Elisha type mantle. And it goes crazy against that spirit. And that's why this... The snake is moving. Yeah. 
Snake is moving. Y'all there or not there? Now, now, let me, let me, let me get on in this. I'm almost done. Look at this. He said now. Now, y'all ready? Now it says that Adam said, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She shall be called woman. She was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man talk back to me. Come on, sisters. This is y'all time to talk. Shall a man talk to me, sisters? You've read this scripture. You know where we had it. A man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. To his wife. What that means is when a man finds a wife, they become a new unit. It's a new corporation. And even though mothers and fathers can give advice, they no longer set law and rule. You can suggest some things she can do to cook, but you can't tell her how to do it. You are in an advisor role. Why? Because they now need to get their own. This is how they gonna mesh. They're gonna grow together because it's only them coming together. So everybody else has to stay out. Don't let your kids call you about their relationships. You marry, you're grown, deal with it. Don't referee it. You deal with it. You pray. I'm over praying for my own marriage. Have a click. <laughs> click. You know your daddy. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Y'all there? <laughs> Y'all there? Come on, let up off that snake. Let it go. Let it go. I feel it, Elder. I feel it. It's, it's, it's there. I feel it. I feel it. So working at witchcraft now, let it go. For the sword come out, let it go. Y'all there? Now, Pharaoh... When Pharaoh wanted to destroy Israel, what did he do? He told some midwives, killed the babies. He attacked the family. He knew that if I can destroy the family, I'll keep them from rising. Simple warfare, destroy the nucleus, whereby the babies are made, and I will keep the nation from rising. Nothing, nothing deep. Destroy the nucleus, and I will keep the nation from rising. The same warfare that they did on us in Egypt is the same warfare they did now. Intervene into the black family. Subsidize the female. Remove the male and I will keep them from rising. Subsidize the female. Remove the male, and I'll destroy the nucleus, and I'll keep them from rising. Has it worked? It's worked. It worked. That's why we are on the back end looking at this destruction trying to figure out what happened as if we got amnesia from the 50s and 60s, what was done in the black community to destroy the nucleus called the family, subsidized fornication, subsidized fornication and dysfunction that caused our kids to be, to be forced because they don't got two parents so they can't teach them at home so somebody got to go to work so they got to be forced to go to this school system. That's teaching them how to be uh, 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 about two daddies. When the job, that job's supposed to be at the house. Talk to me. This is simple warfare. I said we need our women. We need our women. That should be something pleasant. But now it seems to make people angry. 
Because they think the implication of us saying we need our women is that we don't know y'all need us. We know y'all need us. This is what this, what, what, what are we here for? If you sisters look around, these are, these are men in her. Look at these brothers in her. I, always, I got more men following me than women. These are brothers. You know why they follow me? Because they're hearing something they don't hear. I ain't going to neuter the man. I don't believe in that. I'm going to build him. I tell my brothers at my church, I tell my brothers at my church, I tell my brothers, I say, you know what? I don't pastor your wife. I don't pastor your children. That's why we ain't got no you stuff and children stuff, really. I don't pastor that. You know why? Because I pastor you, brother, and then you pastor your wife and your children. Because if I, if, if I, if I, if the Bible says the head of the man, the head of the man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. So how can I jump over his authority and get to his woman? You know why y'all homes are messed up? Y'all been in there counseling with pastors on the couch. They got your woman coming in there thinking the pastor's using your woman to control you. Because they know women going to tell it. And she'll go in there and, 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 and the brother, he, he's upset. He ain't come to church. What's wrong, sister? Well, see. And she's, <laughs> and that's why men be hating pastors. Because you know what? She'll go, that's why I tell, I, I tell sisters, don't be telling that your man I said nothing. You want to make a man mad? Go home and tell him another man told, uh, uh, quote another man. He'd be like, man, did he be mad at me? Because no man wants his woman to be listening to another man. Talk to me. So you brothers keep your wives out of pastor's offices. The Bible says that you, you wash your woman with the water, with the word, so you can present her to yourself unspotted. That's your job. Meaning that every woman, every woman is going to have many hurts, complexes, and dysfunctions. But our job as men, you signed up, brother. No, you didn't sign up to get taken care of like you thought. That comes later. I said it comes later. What you signed up for was to work through some stuff with this woman so that by the time you get to the, she get to the point to where she, she can be presented as this beautiful thing, you need her. Because now you weak. Talk to me. See, so the main problem is we don't submit to the order that God set, which was not going to past us. Your man is the one that you go to. Y'all want it. Y'all want this. They clapping the other, but you know they, nigga, boy, boy, bye, boy. That's what they doing because they've been out of pocket so long that biblical order sound teaching is making them offended because they say they won't change. But when you say this is the way, the biblical way is the way. Oh no, we, the, let's go get another way. Ain't no other way. This is the way. If there was another way, he would have gave us another way. Talk to me. The head of the woman. The head of the woman. Man, Paul messed y'all up when he said that. I feel for you. I really do. I said, Paul, no one they don't like Paul. Paul was a show. See the, see, the, see the Hebrews say, the Greeks say. They got to get the Greek when it come to Paul. See, that didn't really mean that. See, what that mean was he, he was saying, uh, no, that Paul said what he said. What he said. Paul said that. He said that. But notice they love your wife. Hallelujah. 
Look, hallelujah. Wives, submit. But the first part, husbands, they can quote, they ready for that script. They do, ah, they want, huh, ah, ah. say it, Pastor. Oh, say it. They bumping each other. Girl, let's go. Eager and say it. Love your wife hardly. Oh, get it, Pastor. Get it, Pastor. They don't keep reading. <laughs> Wives, reverence, respect. They blank out. See, listen, I'm going to show y'all why we're in trouble. Y'all want to tell you why we're in trouble as a people? About 30 years ago, this message would have been swallowed with a peanut butter jelly sandwich. There wouldn't be no problem. Now, there's so much resistance in this room against what I'm saying because you've been conditioned to be out of pocket and you got some jelly spineless cat that has made you his mama so he shirks it, he steps back and lets you be in authority like Ahab did with Jezebel and you running out getting this Negro vineyards and fulfilling his lust and he's trading his authority for you fulfilling his lust and the kids grow up warped because they don't know what authority really is And that's the reason why you, right now, you as a woman, you so out of pocket because that Negro ain't going to say nothing. Instead of him saying, the man is right. You ain't going to say, I don't get killed, bro. <laughs> she be done pausing you. <laughs> How dare you embarrass me? Don't get killed, bro. Now, now, see, people be wanting to know elder. They be, see, y'all think y'all know me. Y'all don't watch a few videos. Y'all think y'all know me. This is me. This is how I preach. I don't know if y'all know that. But that's why we got so much order. Me and this woman been together over 20 years. I ain't never had another woman since I married her. Amen. Let me show y'all. Let me, let me show y'all something. Something I ain't really never said to people, and I'm going to say it now to prove, what, prove my point. When me and my wife got married, she was very young. Actually, when we met, she was 14. I was 16. We had a baby. She was 15. By the time we had our first child, she was 15. We didn't get married till she was 20. I was 22. Y'all got that? She came from an abandoned home that was so full of dysfunction and chaos, she couldn't trust me past the door. That's what abandonment does, have issues. I signed up for it because I was a man full of the Holy Ghost. I knew it was gonna be rough. She didn't know, I knew. I said, it's gonna be a rough. I didn't know it was gonna be that rough. It was rough, I didn't know it was gonna be that rough. It was rough, man, it's rough. But I got, but what I did was, I got the word, bitch. Got the washing. No, not beat with the word. You don't beat with the word. No, let me show you. You know how you wash your car? And the woman looking out the window, this nigga love this. He's, he's making love to the car. Look at him. The, he does, look how brother wax a kite. <laughs> Bro, whack. You know like that brother with the salt? <laughs> brother love, he's just, he's just touching it. That's why she hates your car. Man, this guy, he's just tender and don't touch it. Don't touch it. He's ten. He's a tender. She looking at him. Oh, I didn't know he could be that ten. He can't even dance. But with this car, he. <laughs> she was. So, I knew what I was in for. So I got the. I got the. I got the word. See, notice. I got to doing it like this. I couldn't, couldn't beat them. It ain't going to work. You're going to reinforce the complexes, the wounds and the pains that, 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 that they suffer. So I got to wash it. 
Got to, I had to get wisdom. The Bible says, husband, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. You don't want no man that won't learn about you, baby. I had to learn about her. So I did some. I went back in the house. Hey, let's, let's see. Okay, a daddy and a mother, grandma. Let's, let's see what the curses are. Generational curse here. This are. Okay, so now I see what I'm going to deal with. Okay, whole side of the family, birth side of the wedlock, no husbands. Okay, that's going to be a problem. We're going to deal with that. You know, okay, I understand. Uh, uh, mother mother left, so it's abandonment. There's going to be some fear. There's some distrust. Okay, I'm going to have to deal with that. Uh, grew up without a lot, uh, you know, a lot of struggling, so she's going to always be, uh, be, be, uh, she's going to always be frustrated about provision, meaning I'm never going to have enough money because this was ingrained because she grew up without a lot. So every time she feels something ain't going to get paid or something will happen, she's going to flip out because that's her response for the fear that she felt when she grew up without the things that she was supposed to have. I'm giving y'all game. Y'all don't even catch what I'm saying. I'm helping you. But this is what I had to do. So I got to working. I got to working because I had to know what I was going to deal with. So year one, it was I. Year two, year three, plowing on through. Year four, year five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Year ten, we got a little breakthrough, bruh. You ain't committed like this, you ain't gonna have nothing good. I'm trying to help you, brothers. Y'all signing up for marriage like this is just jumping in something? Please. You signed up for, for one of the hardest fights of your... I'm a, y'all want me to tell y'all how hard, how hard it is? I'm going to show y'all how it is. I started off talking about you brothers need help. Look at what I'm talking about now. That's how hard it is. Even when I'm talking about you getting healed, I'm talking about her. <laughs> y'all don't know why. Do y'all know why? Lord, don't... Remember the point I was just making about the 10th year. I'm going to tell you why. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, well, no, I'll miss my point. I'll get off. I'm gonna, let me still. Tenth year, we had a conversation, and out of the blue, she said, you know, what you said is the problem. It re- that really is it. I almost went through the windshield. <laughs> I, said, I said this the first year. Well, see, <laughs> well, see, um, I'm, I was scared that if I told you, then you would be angry. And, and, and now, what does that mean? You might leave me. I was angry. Because I said, you know how you was right? And you knew you was right. And they told you, no, that ain't it. And they said, no, it is it. And then they finally tell you, El, you know what? You was right. I'll, that, 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 but that was a breakthrough. I had to count it as a breakthrough. It was a breakthrough. Come on. I'm going to show y'all when I said we need our women. I'm going to show y'all what, how, why. Year 11, we working, we learning, we getting through. Year 12, we getting through. Now, I've been pastoring for a long time. Amen. I've been pastoring these years. It ain't like I wasn't pastoring. Year 12, we getting pretty good. Year 13, you know, start to, ah, 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 getting there. Ah, ah, we understand getting there. You know, year 14, getting good. Year 15, we okay. We, we about right where we need to be. But around year 10, Actually, around year five. Come on, talk to me. I'm going to help you right now. I'm going to bless you. Around year five, I was sick and I didn't know it. Preaching everywhere, working three jobs, had three businesses at the same time, plus full time preaching. But I was getting, I was sick and didn't know it. Kidneys was going bad and didn't know it. But I'm washing it with the water, faithful to the mission, holding down the family building a house, raising the babies, but I'm getting sick, didn't know it. Around year 10, I found out, oh, there's an issue here. I'm young. You know how we doing young, keep going. Around year 15, the manifestations of the sickness started to happen. My church didn't know because I was still 
I believe in being true to the assignment. I don't play for pity or sympathy from nobody. I'm going to do my job. If it kill me, I'm going to do what I got to do. You're 17, it got so bad. Was it about you're 17? It got so bad, but now she's blossomed. That's what the Bible says. You watch it with the water, then you present it to yourself, meaning this, this thing that you worked on is now so, so strong, built up, healed up, beautiful, ready, that she, now, now, when I started to get sick, she was, I had, I had, I, I had built her through her dysfunction so she could be functional. That she was able now to reciprocate. She was able to reciprocate. But what if, listen to me, listen to me, y'all ready? What if I would have gave up? In the fifth year, what if I'd have gave up? Then I would have had to get another woman. And you know when you start over, you don't put your all into that. Because you know the pain of divorce, so you, you sleep with one of your leg like this. You ain't brought your all. So it got so bad that my church didn't even know. I didn't even put this video out. What I'm telling y'all, I already said this before. I didn't put it out. That my, I went in full-fledged kidney failure. You know, that's done. No more. I had polycystic cysts was growing on my kidneys. I, I, I didn't know it. All that time, I didn't know it. But the sicknesses from the poison, y'all, if you know anything about it, it started to get backed up. And, I, and it was so bad that I went to the, I just went to, I've been getting a little checkup, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the, uh, the, the doctor called, and the doctor said, honey, are you dead? She said, these are dead numbers. She said, we see this when, people are dead when we see these numbers. She said, your numbers are higher than people that have died. She said, how are you living? Now, I didn't, I didn't tell her, but I knew. I knew. I knew. I, see, I didn't know what was wrong, but I knew that it was the grace of God. I knew that. I didn't tell her. So I said, okay, I, you know, I, I said, so okay, I, you know, I go to her. Want me to go to the doctor tomorrow? She said, no, now. I went to the doctor immediately. They start doing all these operations. My wife by my side. They said, you know, you're going to need it. It's over. Your kidneys are gone. You're going to need a transplant now. I, 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 see, I, I grew up and didn't know my father, but that's what he died of. Didn't know that. That's why I told you, know your people, because the curses have come down. So I told him, I said, no, I said, you know, uh, uh, I couldn't imagine taking nobody. I, you know, I, I couldn't imagine that, and I didn't want nothing from my family. You know how you don't, I, now some of y'all don't care, but I care. I'm like, no. I live, you know, put the tube in and I just work with that. So I had some called peritoneal dialysis. This is, I'm telling y'all why we need our women. Nobody knows. My own mama didn't know. Nobody knew except my wife. And she, we went back. I would come on Sunday morning, preach up a storm. If y'all go back, from 2015 back, y'all been watching in videos, I was sick the whole time. But the grace. <laughs> but when you anointed to do something, you do it. You anointed to do it. Have you ever noticed that Samson would go and get and just go commit all this adultery? But then when the anoint, when it was time to be anointed, and, and that's what he was born to do. And when I would get up in the pulpit, the anointing would come on me, people would get healed, delivered. I'm laying hands on folks, get, seeing miracles, seeing people get healed of what I'm dealing with. And I'm saying, Lord, what about? Come on now. What about me? You know what he said? 
my grace is sufficient. So my grace is sufficient. So, so, um, so, the, and then I, I remember reading something and I said, and I remember reading about Paul and, 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 and I remember Paul said, you know, I was, I, I, I was caught up to, to the third heaven. I saw things that, that I can't express. Then he said, but for the measure of the revelation, because the measure of my revelation was so great that I was sent the messenger of Satan. I got a thorn in my side. Oh, I, I knew that all too real. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I'm talking about things that that's so revelatory. It's so deep that I astonish. I, I get done preaching. The guy say, look, let me rewind that. What, what was that? And I'm sitting there saying, Lord, and, 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 and I, under, I begin to understood his grace is sufficient. There's a counterweight. Some of y'all want to be great. You don't know what great is. There's a counterweight to every gift. He said, my grace is sufficient. And I knew, I knew then, I said, he could heal me right now. He can do it if he want to. I didn't know why he didn't do it. So, I'm on dialysis. We going back and forth to Chicago every week. Every week we going to Chicago and preach Saturday, drive back Saturday night, preach in my church Sunday. I'm in the back of the van. Elder's driving. He didn't know. But in the back of the van, I'm doing dialysis. He didn't know. My wife would put a blanket over me, and they never knew. But I get up in Chicago, anointing fall. How will God fall? And, I'm, and I get done and say, God, now you got to help me. How is this happening? Where this happening? And what about me? My grace is sufficient. I remember my doctor said, okay, listen. It's time for you to get on this transplant liquor. And I said, no, I don't really want to do that. I said, because I don't want to take nothing from nobody. I said, I'll just, you know, I'll just deal with this. He said, well, you can't deal with it. As long as you're dealing with it, it's going to be a time where it's not going to work. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to get something done. Is this, is y'all, is this, is this, y'all understanding what I'm saying? It's all right. I said, no, it's okay. I, I, I. I told my, and my wife, you know, she started to cry like, baby, you got to do something. I said, no, I said, I said, said, he said, well, you know, the easiest match is your, is your family. You know, you got four children. You have a wife. You might want to, it really was, he said, my children. I said, uh-uh. I said, no. So I said, I'll never take nothing. I'll, I'll die before I take something from them. They're going to live their life. This is what men do. Y'all don't know what men do. I said, so, so I said, okay. I said, okay, y'all can put me on the list, but I wasn't going to do it. I said I would do it, but I knew I wasn't going to do it because I, I wasn't going to do it. And then you know what happened? See, this woman that I had did this to, 15 years, 17, 18 years, she said, I'll, let, let, let me go first. Let me, let me get tested first. I said, no, babe, no, 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 no. She made me. I said, no, 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 let's just stay. No, let me do it. Let me get tested first. I couldn't stop her. I said, no. She was in the room talking to the people. I said, no. Listen to me. Dysfunction, all this dysfunction. She got tested. I didn't, I knew, I'm like, it ain't gonna matter. It ain't gonna be her anyway. Because I already know you can't, it ain't her. How's she gonna be? It, it, it would have been one of my children and I wasn't gonna do it with I wasn't gonna do it for them. I wasn't gonna take it for them. My son, he said, Daddy, I, y'all don't know. He said, I, I'll do it. My daughter in Costa Rica said, Daddy, I'll come home and get tested. Y'all better have some kids. <laughs> you might need a kidney. <laughs> come on, let me go. I'm already knowing that this is not going to work. But she's, it's like I'm letting, doing it to humor her, let her go ahead and go through. My, my doctor come back and say, this is really kind of impossible. She's a perfect match. No. 
Now, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Her blood type is the same as mine. So who, who medical? Does anybody know about medical? The, the antigens were the same. Y'all don't know how impossible this really is. But the antigens, see, that's what make you reject the kidney. The anti, it was the same. My, my doctor was saying, you know what he said? He said, are y'all related? Because he said, he said, she's not supposed to have that. She's not supposed to. She said, she, she's, she's more of a match than anybody. She, this is the perfect match. Like, like her blood is the same blood as yours. Everything's the same. I didn't even know her blood was the same. I didn't know. So after that, I, I mean, I really couldn't argue. I still said I wasn't going to do it. I said, I ain't going to do it. And I put it off a long time. Put it off a long time. I kept making excuses. I said, no, you know, we, we got to do their wedding and we got to go here. We're going to Belize. Let's, you know, I, was t I kept like hoping she would really forget about it. Because, you know, as a man, you don't want to. I mean, if you're a real man, you know, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to take no fun. I'm thinking back in my mind. She's all I got. And then if something happened to her, then... I know if something happened to me, she can handle everything, and, and the kids be out. But what happened to something happened? She's my real rock. I can't, you know, I'm worried about her now more than myself. I was okay with dying for me. I was like, okay, I can go, but she got this. The church had closed down, but trust me, I done put enough money up for her. Y'all church folks ain't got to take care of my wife. She got four kids, two grown sons. She's straight. I got enough property. So finally, I couldn't put it off no longer. We did this one wedding, and it was like, okay, now. And she said, no, come on, baby, we got to do it. So, I, so we went through with it. And today, her, one of her kidneys is right here. Now, for all of y'all who've been watching all them videos and Pastor Darby, oh, he must have such a wonderful life. You don't know. You don't know where that anointing came from. You don't know the press that had to happen to leak that oil out. That's why I get so mad when I hear y'all talk about men of God. Y'all call me, talk, I mean, shut up! You don't know! He could have quit a long time ago. He, he ain't got very many joys. His pain far exceeds his joy. You thinking about getting delivered, he thinking about the last knife he took in the back. The only one that knows is this woman. That's why the pastor's wife start to hate y'all. Because she sees that this Negro is so loyal and he's so devoted. He loved God so much that he'll let you kill him. He'll ruin his own marriage. His own kids be in trouble. But he'll still serve the sheep. He'll still love. How dare you? How dare you leave the church and find somebody else? But how dare you? And because I ain't got nothing to lose. I don't preach for money. If y'all stop following me to my, I'd be straight. I just wanted to share with you. Now when you go back in the catalog and start watching all them videos, remember. It was a price for that revelation. It was cost, it cost me. Appreciate the woman of God a little bit more. But if I didn't have my woman, think about, I'm talking about the same, if I didn't, if you didn't have your woman, 
if you didn't now to have your woman. Bishop, if you didn't have your woman, where would we be? We need, y'all sisters don't know. I'm done. Y'all don't know we need you. I didn't know I needed my wife. I spent a lot of years thinking I didn't need her. I did. I spent a lot of years thinking I was strong enough. I don't need her. The Lord put me in a position where I needed her. I needed her. I didn't even know I needed her. I need her more now. I'm better now, but I need her more now than I did when I was sick. And we never going to get this right until we understand the, this point that I'm making. So what we need? We need our women to woo us again. Speak into me again. I know you can tell me all the things I've done wrong, but speak into me like you spoke into me before. Talk to me the way you used to talk to me that would motivate me to go kill a giant for you. Speak courage into me. And you say, well, I needed myself. Yeah, but, but, but baby, if I give up and die, you're going to need a whole lot more. I need you to be strong for me. You're the only one that can. I can have good friends, but they can't do it. Part of the reason why most men of God are so depressed, why you brothers are so depressed, is because everybody else say you're good. But your woman, that proves to you the world can think you're great, but you ain't nothing until your woman say it. I need my woman to say it. The world can honor me and say he's the greatest thing and we give him a plaque and award and money. But if, if I go home to a woman that don't honor me, I throw the award on the ground because it don't mean nothing. Every man has got a woman to win and we'll spend the rest of our life trying to win him. God forbid the day your man stops trying to win you. The day he stops talking and just gets quiet. The day he gives in. Thank God for the man that'll lay up and argue with you. Thank God. Thank God for the brother that just that, that, that when you say something, he snapped back. That means that brother ain't tired yet. He ain't giving up. Thank God. Beware of the day you say something. And he walk on way. He's done. We need our women, Elder. We need our women, Deacon. I've been doing these conferences, and no matter what I preach, no matter what I say, it boils down to this. You don't need to be and have no hands laid on you to go to the nation to heal the sick, to raise the dead. You need to be able to go home and lay your hands on your, on your husband, on your wife, on your children, and impart that love and nurturing that you have so much for the lost into them. I tell the world, I'm done, I'm done. I tell the world all the time, my ministry is not my ministry. My home has always been my ministry. My home has always been my ministry. The, the reason I preach so hard, because my sons are listening. That's why I preach the way I do. Y'all think I'm thinking about y'all, I'm thinking about them. I can't trust nobody to preach to them the truth the way I am. So I preach so hard because I want them to know when they get in trouble, daddy said that, daddy said that, daddy told me the truth, daddy said that. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Come on, son. Hallelujah. Baby, I need you. How many of y'all know my sons, when they get a woman, wife, wife, wife. That'll be in their reference. They'll have seen 
how their father treated their mother and how the mother treated the father. I just want him to play. Let him play. Y'all can stay here. Let him play. I'm done. I'm going to say this. I preached a message a while back. And I remember saying, I, 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 was, I was riding one day and I, I was flipping through a station and I heard a song. And the song was by, I think, Fantasia. And I don't listen to that music. I keep holding this in my ears. But it caught my ear because she was saying, I ain't going to beg you. And, and when I heard that, I, want, I wanted to hear, like, what, what you talking about? And she ran down a list of why I'm not going to do this and I'm not, you ain't going to take me through this and I ain't going to beg you. I ain't, I ain't going to beg you. And then I, it made me think the modern generation don't stay together past two Sundays. And I found out the reason why. Because what I grew up in my mother's name generation grew up on was Shirley Brown. Some of y'all young. Shirley was the one that called Bob. Said, I ain't gonna come out of a bag or nothing on you. But I want to talk to you woman to woman. You know that man that you in love with? He's my man. I got an epiphany. She's fighting. The modern generation after feminism said, I ain't begging you. But I come up with, and I am telling you. You ain't leaving me. The epiphany that I had is that she tapped into the one thing that men have to have. We have to be needed. Men operate on need. If you tell a man the car's broke, oh, let me look up the hood. I got to check it out. What might be the oil? They, go, they got to be needed. You pull up with all the groceries in the car. 20 bags you get the and then you say oh baby oh how you how you carry all of that stuff oh girl it ain't nothing give me some more he's needed but what we were taught come on what we were taught is I don't need you I don't need no man. And we've heard that as men so long that when a whore say they need us, we drawn to it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. What you must do is show your man, I need you. I put myself in the position of the man that Shirley was singing about. I said, man, I would run home to this woman. She's on the phone. I done cheated. Yeah, I done wrong, but she's like, me and him will deal with that, but you. Did y'all hear? She's talking to the side chick. I know he been with you. But let me, I'm, I'm going to deal with him, but you, you going to let him go. We going to have some problems, but girl, I need him. I need, I need him. That's the difference. Talk to me one time. I got to go. I got to go. Oh, I got to go. I remember years ago, me and my wife, we weren't even, we weren't even saved. We weren't even saved. And, you know, in my unregenerated mind, of course, we all looking for control. And I noticed that we would get mad at each other and I would say, 
Well, I'm, I'm gone. And she would break down and she would start crying after me. Oh, this woman's a trip. Y'all don't know. This girl loved me for a long time. She would cry after me. And I noticed that when she would do that, something in my heart would, would, give, I would, I would give in. I didn't know why I would give in. And that's what our sisters have missed. So this is not a Judah cry, a blood cry, or a cry of repentance. This is the cry of the song of songs. You'll get it later. When this woman that wrote the first poem in the song of songs wrote such a poetic beauty about her lover, this guy that skipped to her on the mountains, this guy, this black man she was writing about. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. She said, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine. What a lyric that is. Now what if you came home, Elder, from a hard day? You walk in the house and say, your love is better than wine. Oh, your love, your love is better than wine be like, what's wrong with her? See, she used to cry after me. You'll catch it. You'll catch it later. She used to cry after me. And no matter how mad I was, I couldn't, I couldn't walk all the way away because she needed me. And she was putting herself in a vulnerable position that made me see, not see the toughness and the roughness and I'm done. Cause that repels a man cause you're acting like me. But the femininity, what causes men to be attracted to women, the femininity. I would see that in that moment and she will become the most attractive thing at that time. Revelation for you. Y'all ready for the revelation? Why do y'all think I know there's children in here, but I'm going to say this. I, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Why do y'all think after y'all argue, fill that in? It is the best. <laughs> Why do you think that? Because vulnerability. You're attracted to the vulnerability. She's sitting over there. This hurt my feelings. I love it. better than wine. <laughs> That's a song. <laughs> we the men of Judah need our women to cry once again after us. I remember years ago, uh, I remember I was preaching one time and I said, this ain't no boyfriend, girlfriend thing why I ain't sweating you. I'm sweating you. I'm letting you know and I'll go on your job and tell her I will run up on your baby mama and tell her his love is better than wine come on we need our women I say a lot of things it's never no injury it's to bring revelation this is what we need in, in this, in our black community. I'm done. Come on, bow your heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw me. I'll run after you. Jesus put the love in my heart for you, for you are my end, and I give my life for you. You had me, 
just when you spoke my name. So Father, strengthen the true foundation of the nation of Israel. We don't need tanks and bombs and, and guns. Strengthen this foundation that we come together as individual families. And we build a nation of people that are in order where our women are covered and our children are in gravity. Drive out of the kingdom the independency. Put in, an, in us codependency. Cause our men to be faithful, trustworthy, willing to put in the work. Put in the work, brothers. You got a beautiful thing that'll bless you later, but you got to put in the work. She's been waiting on a man that would say, I see the real you, girl. I, I know. But I'll never leave. I see all your problems. But I'll never leave. And you're crazy as me. But I'll never leave. She wants to blossom for you, man. Some of you brothers been married a long time. Your wife closed up the flower because you've been angry and you've been bitter. The Bible says don't be bitter with the wife of your youth. You've been angry because you're frustrated. You're taking out your frustration as she's closed up the flower of her love. But brother, you got to go to her. Sometimes we have to repent for being harsh and trying to turn our wife into us. Thinking she can take the pressure that we can take. Speak those words you spoke to her that caused her to blossom in the first place. Cause her to open up once again and let that little girl out where she trusted you with that, with that immature person. Be her champion again. And Judah will rise. I was talking about the sisters, but brothers, it always comes back to us. Judah will rise. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you one exercise. Don't be mad if you have no one to turn to. The Lord knows. He's bringing up, raising up men in the kingdom for you. Turn to you. If you're here with your spouse, turn to him. Come on, baby. Turn to him. If you got your spouse with you. If you're engaged, turn. I, I'll let you in on it, brother. Hallelujah. Turn to him. Matter of fact, hold him. Get close to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them feel you again. Not in a sexual way, but in an intimate way. That's what men miss when they get 35, 40 years old. Intimacy. Father, heal my wife. Heal my husband. I've spoken words that broke them. I broke their heart. I heard them. Forgive me. I need her. I need him. We can't rise without one another. Forgive us for acting a fool, even in front of the kids. Forgive us. This is the one you gave me for this lifetime. Hallelujah. Heal. Heal us. So we can love again. Heal. Heal us. I want to be your champion. 
Restore the joy we had before. Because it ain't over. And it ain't over for me and you. And we will rise again. For you are mine for this lifetime. And I am yours and you are mine. You are mine for this lifetime, and I am yours, and you are mine, and we're going to make it, make it, play song, make it, hallelujah, come on, tell your spouse, we're going to make it, make it, some of y'all ain't held your spouse this long in a long time, y'all lay in the same bed and don't touch, hold your spouse, we in church, it's legal. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. Cry after me once again. I need to hear that you want me. We're going to make it. Come on. Because I am yours and you are mine. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. Father, those that have no one to hold, bring the one to hold. Heal our sisters in the kingdom. Yeah, we might have made some mistakes, but God ain't done. He will bring the one. Heal our brothers that are looking. Bring the one. This is what our children should see in the house of God. Instead of us laying out on the floor looking for giftings and anointings, they see me hugging my wife, hugging my husband, Embracing in the house of God, stirring up the love of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. Come on now, lift your hands up to the Lord. Say, Lord, anoint me to heal my wife. Anoint me to heal my husband. Anoint me to heal my children. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better. Hallelujah. 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 And I believe, yeah. And I believe that we're going to make it. God didn't bring us this far for us not to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't that good? I am yours and you are mine. I'll write a song on y'all up here. I'll write, write a song in a heartbeat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, how many, now, now don't be, don't, don't be upset. Don't be mad. How many of you here didn't have nobody to hold? You just didn't turn to nobody. Just raise your hand. It's all right. That's all right. Raise your hand no more. That's really not a lot. Unless y'all lying. That's not a lot. Sir, oh, y'all lying. Some of y'all ain't raising your hand. Raise your hand. What's y'all scared of? Let's see the lie. You stop right there. Don't put it back up. I said, put it back up. Ain't nobody calling you out. Ain't nobody calling you out. I want you to understand what's happening here. If men sit under this word and women sit under this word, lift your hand up one more time. Let me help you. Lift it up. Lift it up one more. Now just look around a little bit. They might be in here. I can only help you. I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make you drink. Lift your hand up one more time. Y'all see, I want to be silly. See, you ain't too old. Lift your hand up. God know the desires of your heart. Now look around. See, some of y'all put your hand down. Look around. Turn one time. We got brothers in the back. And y'all don't want to talk. Look back there. That's my oldest brother. Lift your hand, big bro. That's my oldest brother. He's single. He back there. Pass by that way on your way out. Because I don't know about you, I want somebody in the kingdom. I want somebody sitting under this word because we're going to need it to be together. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop playing. Lift your hands. Y'all can lift your hands. They yell. Lift your hand. I got single brothers around me. Do y'all, do you sisters see them? Just walk past them one time. All right, come on. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all had a good time in this conference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Orlando, we bless you. Florida, we bless you. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost take Florida. Go our way down to Miami and Tampa, to Gainesville, to Jacksonville, Pensacola. Let the anointing, this anointing sweep in this state. Raise up the pastors in this state. Give them the authority of the nation. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Turn and give somebody a hug. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank every one of you all from the bottom of my heart. I don't take it lightly. We've been in a lot of cities. The Negro Land only been in two cities, but Stephen Darby Ministries and Destin Ministries, we've been in a lot of cities. We actually just came from California and North Carolina and we're probably going to be going to Texas and New York. I know New York, we're in New York. Um, but I, I don't take it lightly. Thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for traveling. I know it costs to come. Thank you for doing what you had to do to get here. I'm eternally grateful. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, brother. Brother came my way from Chicago. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all that came from Arkansas, I don't know. Where y'all at from Arkansas? Who was the, who, who, somebody, oh, they must have left. The ones that came from Arkansas. Who gave us those t-shirts? I forgot to bring them. Thank you. Those are beautiful. I meant to, I meant to bring them to show uh, the shirts. They had some Grace Retreat shirts, amen? Uh, and, and that was wonderful what they did. We appreciate that. Amen. Thank y'all for all the love, the gifts. All of y'all who just constantly comment and are so appreciative and grateful for this ministry. Thank y'all for loving me, loving my wife. I wish I can hug all of y'all. Amen. If I said something that offended you good, rub it. You know, you know, your mama used to pop you and you rub it. It'll go away. Amen. But I really do love you. I think it's the end times that we need to have a strong, straight word. Even if we don't like it, give it to me straight and strong. You know you've been lied to long enough. You ought to want somebody to cut you. Because you've been sitting up by the bunch of, ah, ah, and you ain't heard no word. Say amen. Amen. Grab somebody's hand. Let's be dismissed. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this conference. I thank you for Bishop Coleman, Pastor Tebow. Thank you for the importation, the anointing that was released. I thank you for all the staff, those that traveled, those that stayed in this hotel. And yes, we'll go ahead and pray for the hotel that did us so wrong, and I hope they hear that. But we pray for y'all. We bless you. We ain't going to curse you. We're going to bless you. We're going to bless you with the money we paid. Now, we're going to bless you. By the way, I thank you for your people. Thank you for the love that's poured out the great fellowship in here. Thank you for those that got a breakthrough. Thank you for deliverances and healings. Thank you for the 15 years of pain that dropped off of marriages. I thank you for that, Father. Thank you for the destiny, the future, the purpose of those that are here. Thank you for the doors that you're going to open. Thank you for the stirring up anointing they bring him back to their city. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Orlando. Thank you for this city. Thank you for the means that God has heard, the money to get her. We thank you. We're grateful. We're grateful that we could have been anywhere. We could have been in a crack house or a heroin house. But we chose to come to the house of God. Hallelujah. Because we love you and we want more of you. Thank you, Father. In your most gracious holy name of Yeshua the Christ. And everybody yelled. Amen, amen, hallelujah.